dear learners today we will discuss about the problems of unemployment poverty and inequality when we talk about these problems unemployment poverty and inequality these are the major hurdles or obstacles in the development of our economy or in the road of economic development of the country so today you will learn about the meaning types and important measures of unemployment then we will talk about the causes of unemployment after that we'll be talking about the poverty and the problem of inequality in the income distribution for our country the population of any country consists of two components the first one being the labor force and second one being the non labor force now the important thing is what is the difference between labor force and non labor force in an economy labor force means all persons who are working as well as those who are not working but are seeking or available for work at the current wage rate of the economy that means whosoever is engaged in the economic activity or those people those who want to get engaged in the economic activity will be the part of the labor force now what do we mean by that this means a person who is working or has employment as well as those who are willing to work or those who are seeking employment will be the part of the labor force labor force consists of both employed people as well as unemployed people those who are willing for the employment non labor force the component of population which is not a part of the labor force is known as the non labor force of the economy that means these are the people those who are not seeking employment or those who are not employed so non labor force includes all those who are not working and are neither seeking nor available for the work in an economy unemployment it can be defined as a state of worklessness for a person who is fit and willing to work at the current wage rate that means a person who is willing to work but is not able to get the job in that case he will be known as the unemployed person it is a condition of involuntary and not voluntary idleness that means if i on my own choice is not willing to work i am voluntarily idle or i am voluntarily unemployed let us start with the new topic which is unemployment it can be defined as a state of worklessness for a person who is fit and willing to work at the current wage rate that means if a person is looking for a job he is fit for the job he is willing to work but he is not able to get the employment in the economy in that case that person will be called the unemployed person so it is a condition of involuntarily and not voluntary idleness that means if by my will i am not willing to work i will not be the unemployed person because it is my wish not to work in the economic system of a particular country an unemployed person is the one who is an active member of the labor force and is seeking work but is unable to find the same if a person is from the non labor force that means if he is not willing to work if he is not seeking the work and if he is not doing the work he will not be the part of unemployment because that person by his wish is not doing any work so that person will not be included in the unemployed person in a particular economy voluntary unemployment voluntary unemployment is the case in which a person is out of the job on his own accord or choice doesn't want to work in the current wage rate system or whatever rate is prevalent in the market he is not willing to work so either he wants or he is looking for a higher wages or doesn't want to work let us explain it with the help of example person a is not willing to work in any of the employment opportunity which is available in the market because he may be having a good amount of money with himself 
so he is not willing to work so that person will not be the part of unemployed people and that person will be called a voluntarily unemployed person similarly if that person is expecting a higher wage for a particular work and at a current wage rate which is prevailing in the market he is not accepting that employment again that will be the part of voluntary unemployed now the question is why why a person who is looking for a better wage rate will be a part of voluntary unemployed reason being we have the forces of demand and supply of the workforce in the economy for example doing a particular job if all the workforce is willing to work maybe at rupees 500 and that person is looking for a wage rate of 1000 when we have a large amount of people those who are willing to work at 500 so the employer will hire those people with the same skill set so the person who is looking for a higher wage rate will not get the job and it will be in the category of voluntary unemployed the another topic is involuntary unemployment which is more relevant when we talk about the problem of unemployment this is the situation when a person is separated from remunerative work and devoid of wages although he is capable of earning his wages and is also anxious to earn them that means a person is willing to work he is having the skill set he is having the knowledge he is qualified enough to do the job but is not able to get the job because of n number of reasons or because of so many reasons in that case that is actually the problem of unemployment it is the involuntary idleness that constitutes unemployment as i previously told you that if a person is willingly unemployed or if he is voluntarily unemployed he doesn't want to work because of any reason maybe he is having good amount of money with himself to spend that is the reason he is not willing to work or maybe he is looking for a higher wages but other people are willing to do the same job for the same wage so he is unemployed so that will not be the part of unemployment but it is only the involuntary idleness or unemployment which is more crucial for an economy and as an economist as the government we have to think about those those who are involuntary unemployed and we have to make the policies accordingly now the different types of involuntary unemployment so now let us come to the involuntary unemployment which is more crucial for an economy these are the different types of involuntary unemployment it may be categorized into cyclical unemployment structural unemployment seasonal unemployment natural rate of unemployment frictional unemployment disguised unemployment and under employment now let us discuss these types of unemployment one by one so that you have a better clarity about these different types of unemployment the first one being the cyclical unemployment cyclical which goes with the cycle it is also known as demand deficient unemployment which occurs when the economy is in need of low workforce that means when there is an economy wide decline in aggregate demand for goods and services employment declines and unemployment corresponding increases that means in simple word if you try to understand cyclical unemployment it says when the economic activities are going down there will be less demand for the goods and services there will be less production for the goods and services as a result employment opportunities will come down and that cyclical effect of the business cycle will be there on the unemployment and this decrease is known as cyclical unemployment it occurs during recession or depression as i told you when the economic activities are going down when the production is going down it is the example of recession or if it is for the longer period it may be a part of depression or it will be a depression in that case when the economic activities are going down employment opportunities will also go down and there will be unemployment in the economy which is a major problem for an economy so this form of unemployment is known as cyclical unemployment since unemployment moves with the trade cycle 
For instance, during the recent global slowdown in the late 2008 global crisis, many workers around the globe lost their job and that unemployment is cyclical unemployment because it is going with the trade cycle of the business. The another form of unemployment is seasonal unemployment. This type of unemployment occurs in a particular time of the year or a particular season and thus is known as seasonal unemployment. Seasonal unemployment is the most common in industries like agriculture industry, tourism, hotel industry, catering industry. These are the some example where we have seen the seasonal unemployment. Let us take tourism for example. In most of the winters, maybe on the hilly areas, the tourists are visiting less in number and employment opportunity will be less in those hilly areas. Whereas in seasons, in the summers, more people are visiting the hilly areas and more employment opportunities are there in that particular season. So as per the season also, there may be unemployment. Similarly, in agriculture, in some seasons, there is no agriculture activity or less agriculture activity. So there will be less employment opportunities available and people will be unemployed maybe for a particular season, maybe a month or a week or maybe it a quarter of the year. The another type of unemployment is structural unemployment. Because of the structural changes in the economy or structural changes in the industry, if a person is unemployed, we will call it structural unemployment. This arises when the qualification of a person is not sufficient to meet his job responsibilities. That means if a person is not having the skill set required to do a particular job or to complete a particular job, in that case, he will be structurally unemployed. It arises due to long term change in the pattern of demand that changes the basic structure of the economy. Now, what do we mean by that? This means the person is not able to learn new technologies used in the new expanding economic sector. That means they are not having the skill set required which is required in the industry to complete a particular job and they thus may be rendered permanently unemployed. Now to understand this, let us take one example. When computers were introduced, many workers were dislodged because of a mismatch between the existing skills of the workers and the requirement of the job. Reason being when the computers were introduced, new skill set is required, those people are required, those who can operate the computers. And if in your organization you are not able to learn the new skills, in that case you will be unemployed or you will be out of the employment. Although jobs were available at that time, there was a demand for a new kind of skill and qualification that was the ability to work on the computers. So persons with old skills did not get employment in the change economic regime and remain unemployed when these computers were introduced in our country for most of the organizations. The another type of unemployment is frictional unemployment. Now what do we mean by that? Frictional unemployment occurs when a person is out of one job and is searching for another for different reasons. That means a person is unemployed maybe for a month, maybe for a day, maybe for a week or maybe for two, three months because of any reason. And those reasons may be that he may be looking for a better job. So uh, if a person is looking for a better job, maybe he is unemployed for a week or maybe a month. So that will be the part of frictional unemployment. The another reasons may be that he has been fired from the current job. In that case, maybe he will remain unemployed maybe for a month, two months or maybe six months because he is looking for a new job. Again, that will again be a part of the frictional unemployment. The another reason may be that he has voluntarily quit a current job maybe because of pressure from the job or maybe for some other reason maybe for the family commitments in that case the duration in which he is unemployed or he is not on any 
करंट एम्प्लॉयमेंट ही विल बी दार्ट ऑफ द फ्रिक्शनल अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इट जनरली रिक्वायर्स सम टाइम बिफोर अ पर्सन कैन गेट द नेक्स्ट जॉब इन ऑल दी थ्री सिचुएशन सो ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम ही इज फ्रिक्शनली अनएम्प्लॉयड नाउ लेट एस डिस्कस अ न्यू टॉपिक विच इज नेचुरल रेट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट दैट वट इज द नॉर्मल रेट और नेचुरल रेट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इन अ पर्टिकुलर इकनॉमी द सम टोटल ऑफ फ्रिक्शनल एंड स्ट्रक्चरल अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इज द नेचुरल रेट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट दैट मीन्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट बींग द फ्रिक्शनल अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वैन यू आर लुकिंग फॉर अ न्यू जॉब मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ एनी रीजन और यू आर नॉट हैविंग द स्किल सेट विच इज रिक्वायर्ड इन द इंडस्ट्री इफ यू आर अनएम्प्लॉयड बोथ द कॉम्बिनेशन और बोथ द पीपल दोज हु आर अनएम्प्लॉयड बिकॉज ऑफ दीज रीजन विल बी द नेचुरल रेट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट विल काउंट इन द नेचुरल रेट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वेर एज द प्रीवियस टू विच इज द साइक्लिकल अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट और मे बी द सीजनल अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट दीज आर नॉट नॉर्मल दीज आर ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ द बिजनेस साइकिल और मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ सम रीजन सो विल नॉट बी इंक्लूडेड इन द नेचुरल रेट ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट द अनदर टाइप ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इज डिस्गाइज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट द अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट विच इज नॉट विजिबल is said to be disguised unemployment it is the unemployment which occurs when a person does not contribute anything to the output even when visibly working in the organization or that particular setup this happens amongst family labor especially in agriculture sector who are engaged on land but are not contributing to the given level of output that means their marginal productivity is zero so you might have seen that different laborers are engaging their family members in the production activity of some farm activities but in reality those people those who are engaged from the family they are not contributing much in the additional production or they are not contributing much in the level of output so though as we are seeing them that they are working in the organization or at that farm setup but actually they are not contributing to the productivity or they are not increasing the production so those people will be the part of disguised unemployment the another type of unemployment is underemployment when a person is engaged in the economic activity but that fail to provide him fully in accordance to his qualification and efforts thus in that situation a person who is employed but not in the desired capacity whether in terms of compensation hours or level of skill and experience that employment will be called the underemployment though he is employed but not up to his full capacity now let us understand how we measure unemployment in an economy unemployment rate is the percent of labor force that is without work in an economy that means unemployed workers divided by total labor force in 200 whatever figure you will get that will be the unemployment rate in an economy if 10 people out of 100 are not getting the jobs that means 10% people are unemployed in the economy measurement of unemployment is a difficult task in a country like india most comprehensive and reliable data on unemployment are compiled by the national sample survey organization and based on the difference reference period nsso provides four different measures of unemployment in our country which are usual principal status unemployment usual principal and subsidiary status unemployment current weekly status unemployment and current daily status unemployment coming to the first part which is ups or usual principal status unemployment so what they do in ups is they identify the principal activity of the worker and the subsidiary activity of the worker for example a person who is willing to work in a pharmaceutical company may be a principal activity of that person subsidiary activity may be the, those activities in which if he is not getting the job in the principal activity he will be the part of some other organization maybe he will work with some accounting firm so in this usual principal status unemployment the number of people those who are unemployed in their principal activity will be counted 
and the resultant figure will be the usual principal status unemployment in that particular time. Another is usual principal subsidiary status. So, in this, in addition to principal activity, those who are not getting the job even in subsidiary status or subsidiary activities, they are also counted and the figure of unemployment is generated. The third one being currently weekly status. So, when they are conducting, NSSO is conducting the survey, in that particular week, if a person is not getting a job for a day or for some time, that person will be counted for the unemployed person. And last one being current daily status unemployment, if a person is not getting a job for a day or maybe some hours for a day, it will be counted in current daily status unemployment. So, dear learners, today we have learned about the unemployment and what are the different ways by which we measure unemployment. Thank you. Thank you so much.